Hey, Motorman here. If you watched my video a few days ago, I did a complete review of the new Road Glide and Street Glide ST models. And I asked everybody in this to put down the comment section if you'd like to hear more about the trip. So that's what this video is going to be about. And I'm going to tell you exactly how it happens and, and what occurred. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. I'm going to mix in some videos and some pictures in with while I'm talking. And I even, I even made a list here. I usually don't, uh, don't ever use any notes, but I actually made a list here so I would remember it exactly as it occurred because you said you want all the details. So first, let me say we were out in Tucson, Arizona, and I fly out of Tampa. And I think first went to Houston, and that's a two and a half hour ride, and then on to Tucson. And uh, they have a car that comes to the airport and picks you up. A woman was driving a beautiful Lincoln. And I immediately noticed that the roads in Arizona are in pretty bad shape. I mean, this car was bouncing all over the place. And that's, you know, a big luxury car. So when we rode the motorcycles later on on the same roads, it was a bumpy ride for them as well. But, you know, if it's a bad ride in a Lincoln, it's, it's not going to be any better on a motorcycle, that's for sure. But we got there, at, uh, I would say, early afternoon or mid-afternoon. And the first thing we do, very nice room. And they even have some gifts for us. Harley Davidson button-down shirt, T-shirt, and number one sign, autograph too. I can't wait to see the motorcycles and do some riding. Good afternoon. And the first thing they do is they're gonna feed you and have a wonderful dinner. And then they have an introduction to tell you what, what you're gonna be doing that weekend. And I just wanted to quickly uh, say a couple words before I hand it over to Mr. Schuster here. Um, just the corporation is super, super stoked that you guys are here and really appreciate your enthusiasm for the brand. And uh, it's, it's, sort of, it's the conversation that we have at the corporation, especially in the design studio and, and the engineering um, in the labs at, at the product development center. We really pay attention to what's happening out on the street with our customers and our enthusiasts in terms of how you guys are taking the motorcycles and sort of reinterpreting them and how you're customizing them. Um, you know, Willie G used to say that it's, it's really a conversation that we're having with our customers in terms of the product, right? So the, we create something, we hand it out to the world, you guys take it, kind of cut it up, paint it, customize it. That influences us to think about different things. And, this whole cycle has just kept, you know, kept repeating itself really since the beginning of the company. So this whole performance bagger trend, of course, is, is, is a great example of that. So Jordan's going to go into a little more detail in terms of like how this all happened, but it's really important. I just wanted to give you a it's really important that you're here and we really appreciate you being here because the interaction that we have with you guys is what's going to feed future you know, products in our portfolio. So thank you so much for being here. And you are going to hand it over to you. Thanks, Ralph. Um, you know, really, if you guys think about it, since the dawn of the motor company, people have been, you know, embracing our motorcycles as a form of self-expression, right? And, and every generation, um, you know, has done that a little bit differently. And what's, as Brad mentioned, what's so exciting about the ST is we really feel like, you know, we're on a, we're on a pivotal shift moment right now where, you know, a new generation is coming in and they're, they're treating our, our touring bikes in a different manner, right? They're, they're customizing them with a, with a different flavor, with a different purpose. And, you know, as a designer, it, it's change is always good. And it, it's, it's interesting to be, you know, right on that moment when you see opportunities that are rising and, and new trends coming up. And I, I want to tell you something. Uh, these people really do care about what the riders think of their motorcycles. That's why they sent us out there. They want to get our view on it, as well as the view of, our, uh, of the people who watch our videos. And I think this is, this is a very good thing because you want to be as close to the riders as possible. You don't want to be you know, in a whole uh, other universe. And Harley Davidson, what I've seen, is wants to be just as close as possible to their actual market. The reason they came out with these ST models is because they've noticed over the past few years, uh, a lot of people riding baggers are adding a lot of performance goodies to these motorcycles. So that's why Harley came out with their performance bagger. And of course, they won the King of the Baggers Championship. And they know that the people that were watching that were a whole different group of people that watch a sport bike uh, racing or Grand Prix racing on motorcycles. And, and they have, they're well aware of this. And that's why they came out with these particular models, a higher performance model of the standard baggers. 
And we also were privileged enough to meet Travis and Kyle Wyman. They, they are the guys who won the last bag, King of the Baggers uh, series of races. So, um, pretty special moment for all of us to be uh, a part of this whole program and seeing that, um, you know, the racing efforts that the whole team that we've been, we've been pushing for is, is now coming full circle and, and seeing a production bike that's based around that. So, um, really excited to have the ST models here for you to try out and uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a great feeling for us to, to have this opportunity. So. It's really cool. Yeah, we're excited for races. And you wouldn't think, uh, well, m maybe you would, but these were very approachable, just really nice people. You could ask them anything you wanted. And I'm sure whatever we we're going to ask them, they've, they've been, you know, had the same questions answered uh, a thousand times before, but you would never know it to speak with them. Any of the officials from Harley Davidson, the people there were very approachable, couldn't be any nicer. And I did get a chance, in fact, to speak with the guy who designed these two motorcycles here, the Revival. And, uh, All right, I'm sitting here next to the gentleman who designed the Revival. And uh, what was your name? Uh, Bjorn Schuster. And, and uh, he was asking me how I liked it. Obviously, I, I must like it because I bought two of them. But, but what was your thinking when you were, when you designing that bike? Uh, well, Jerry, we were, you know, I was really attracted to the original model uh, yeah. that's based off of. Uh, you know, we wanted to celebrate the history, specifically kind of the, the origin of the fat wing. Uh, and that, that first appeared in 1969 as a fashion So, you know, the revival was, a, was about you know, kind of celebrating our history and looking at a yeah. specific model. And, 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 and it'll last another 150, 150 years. For me, it was also a, you know, an Still opportunity for, for you know, our whole entire team, an opportunity to celebrate uh, kind of core history. And we also had. Nick Lintosh, uh, he has a performance riding school. Nice, great. Well, y'all realize you're the luckiest people on earth, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yes. It's yes. a really good deal. I've been a journalist since '84 and just always really appreciated it. So, really glad to have you here. And we, Hardy Davidson is doing something that uh, I mentioned a couple of yesterday. I wish that others had done early in my riding career and racing career, journalism career, and that is bring in this champion's idea. What What are the best in the world doing? Uh, the best in the country doing to ride these bikes the best. And uh, is Bjorn still here? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Bjorn, this whole approach of uh, bringing expert riders in to help them ride this bike is because, is, is, can the bike be ridden just about any way and have it work? How specific is this? It can be ridden different ways and work up to a point. Yeah. Until things get going, things get closer to limit. But I mean, the way we design these bikes, the way they're meant to be, to be ridden, it's the same way you're meant to be ridden for a race bike or for any other type of bike. The skills are all the same. And these guys are excellent at teaching such things. I appreciate that. We're the champion school and um, worked with Bjorn's team, worked with a lot of Hardy dealers over the years, and et cetera. A lot of police departments at high speed training. And uh, you think to yourself, well, I'm not going to ride at the limit. Okay, well, today could be today, it could be very soon. You pop over the hill on a road you've been many times, and you pop over the hill, it's been freshly graveled, and everything has stopped. And all of a sudden, you're at the limit. Today, you come down into a 50 mile an hour left hand corner and you get in there and it's 25 miles out of the right and some kids fold the sign and you're at the limit. So things that we'll get across to you and, and work hard on uh, with you this morning on the, on the track will be put into play hopefully the rest of your lives. And uh, the group we have teaching you, in fact, it's kind of an, a unique group. We're all national winners, um, a couple of uh, national champions included, a couple of future national champions, I think, too. So it's, a, it's quite an interesting group. Uh, Cody Wyman, he's a um, Moto American national winner. Uh, grew up on dirt track, grew up at the Hardy dealership, as you all know, um, and rides. Uh, he's one of our lead instructors at Champ School. Kyle Wyman, a uh, 10, <coughs> 10 time national winner. Feel pretty good? Digits. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> ten, 10 national wins and right. number, one, number one plate uh, in this deal. And uh, really won it from the front at the last race. One of our lead instructors and one of our core guys. So Kyle Wyman, Daytona 200 champion. I'm talking about something that's really good. Grew up under. And Travis, national winner again. 11. 11 national winners. <laughs> 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 well, I'll always do one more on it. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That's great. So, Travis, national winner as well. And uh, <clears throat> we have on our team. And my name is Nick Einach. So, 
I'm the CEO of Camp School, and this is a big deal to us, getting across these ideas. Yeah, so, a couple number one plates, too. Huh? I did, yeah. did, yes, sir. Back when they had wooden tires, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> For those. We, 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 ran maple, we ran a soft maple. We ran a, yeah. okay. Back when techniques were totally different. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, fantastically Ooh, different. Maybe not. Mm -mm, no, we got, we got proof for it. So here's the idea. Here's what we're going to try to get across to you. Four things that we want to put to the top of your priority list. When you come in with different priorities, we want to move those around and put four things at the top of the list. And uh, Cody, you're Valentino Rossi for a moment. This is your bike. It rolls out for practice. It's final call. What are you doing? Yeah, Valentino Rossi, arguably greatest motorcycle rider of all time. Uh, each time you'll see him get on the motorcycle, before he gets on, he kneels down by that foot peg. Mm. And, you know, whether he's saying a prayer or whatever it is, he's getting his mind focused on understanding that he can do, he's about to do something dangerous. He's about to do something that can kill you. Let's put our brain focused on, on being in the moment and really just laser, laser focus. Uh, we know how important, how important it is. Um, a lot of things can happen on the street, a lot of things can happen on the racetrack, but really being in the moment, you know, what does that really mean? You know, kind of feeling your, feeling your toes and your shoes, you know, feeling that sun hitting your back. Really just feeling all, all these senses and really understanding uh, where we are. These, these are mantras, something you say or do before you ride, I think, as a professional rider, you have to develop that. You have to get on these bikes with a mindset of, of, uh, of focus. So let's try one mantra. Say it out loud, please. Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I? What am I doing? Well, let me answer that question. You're going to ride a motorcycle you've never seen before, on tires you've never seen before, on roads you've never seen before. Uh, that's, that's where you are. So let's bring that focus level up. Um, every one of us has this way to get into focus. And then K-Dub, we're riding around. We're having a fun time. And... We have to get refocused after a mistake. What do we do? What, what's the Make plan? Make mistakes and, and we get over them. All right, we start start our lap at the next apex if we're on a track. You, you start you, you refocus on what's up ahead. Hmm. And uh, you know this both in riding and in life. Yeah. Right. It's good to refocus, get get back. You know, fo getting focused to start your ride is fairly simple. Getting refocused when something goes wrong on your ride is a little more difficult. So something that we really talk about is just getting refocused on what the task is ahead. Travis, how many perfect races, how many perfect laps have you run in your life? <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> so riders, all, all you uh, personalities that have to have everything perfect, you gotta get over that. You gotta put it behind you. If you make a mistake, start, start your lap immediately. Start your ride immediately. So I'm gonna say, when you make a mistake, I want you to say, start your ride immediately. Restart your ride immediately. When you make a mistake, restart, restart your ride, ride immediately. You have to have this in your mind because the mistakes can be pretty big, <clears throat> right? You can be tossed out of the seat, rough, the thing lets go and you up on top, you break the windscreen with your helmet, and you got to land back on that seat and, thank you Lord, and then restart that lap immediately. And, I, and it's a huge part of it's, it's our first core <clears throat> champion's habit. This is the idea that we're going to make mistakes, and the people that worry about them will, will go across the center line two, two miles later. Yeah, how many times have we seen on film? or champ school will film behind and, and review that and they make a mistake in turn five they're shaking their head end up running off the track in turn eight because they're still thinking about that yeah. right. so, it. Yep. so last year i had the season's biggest moment and biggest save <laughs> number one um, and it almost threw me out of the seat it's pretty wild ride had to regroup Hammered back on the gas, got into the next corner, and ended up coming home with a top Riding five school. Finish, so. And I'm going to get, put a link to it down below. And also, uh, you can go on, online and do an online course where he shows you all about high-performance riding on a motorcycle. And you may say, well, what could you learn from a video? Well, I'm the guy who knows an awful lot of people learned an awful lot from my videos. So I personally, I'm going to take this course uh, online, and if I can, they're going to have uh, a school down in Homestead, Florida, I believe in May. And while it's going to be probably 100 degrees in May, as usual here, I think I'm going to go to the school. The school itself is on the expensive side. This is not for the casual rider. It's for somebody who really wants to take advantage of everything their motorcycle has to offer and really improve their skills. And I learned a tremendous amount from these guys. Uh, I've, a lot of people think that I know everything about riding motorcycles. That's not true. Uh, I'm not the best rider in the world, and, and I don't know everything about it. In fact, riding a motorcycle skillfully is a constant learning process. And they went over uh, traction and why uh, trail braking, why using trail braking can help not just 
uh, out on a racetrack, but also out on the road. It makes a lot of sense. They did a great job. When we got to the racetrack, the, uh, I believe it started about 9 o'clock in the morning until about noon. And my only regret is that the track thing wasn't all day long. I, I would have really enjoyed that. In fact, if it was two days or three days, it would have been even better. But we were quite a few hours there on the track. We got instructions. We're able to follow the champion riders, the, the Wyman brothers, through the course, show you what the best line is. Uh, they stop every once in a while and critique your riding and give you some helpful hints. And these guys were just top notch. I mean, it was so enjoyable. I, I was actually thrilled to be out there and be surrounded by some of the best instructors for high performance riding, probably in the business. I mean, these guys are actually champion riders, race winners. So the, the uh, track thing went on, I think, from, from 9 to about noon. We had lunch. By the way, the food was very good. They supply everything uh, from hors d'oeuvres to, to the full meal. It's a wonderful place to be. The hotel rooms that they give you there are actually, I think they call them castitas. They're around the racetrack, so you've got a view of the racetrack from your room. The rooms are top-notch as well. Uh, they had uh, some nice uh, prizes for us as we got there. There's a bag with uh, two long sleeve T-shirts. Uh, and if you, don't, if you ever bought a Harley T-shirt, you know they're on the expensive side, uh, as well as a nice button-down shirt and uh, a number one Harley-Davidson race thing, uh, sign which I, I now have hanging in my garage so overall it was just a, a great experience both on the racetrack and as I said uh, I've been doing this for a lot of years riding motorcycles since I was uh, let's see about 19 years old and I rode for many years knowing nothing went to motor school really learned how to ride the bike especially at low speeds and now I've got a lot more information about high-speed riding and how to enjoy the bike I can tell you this the, these motorcycles even your average road king or any of the heavyweight motorcycles, very few riders can actually take advantage of their motorcycles' complete and full capabilities on a, on a winding road uh, at high speeds. Uh, maybe 5% of you can do that. So the more you know about riding a motorcycle, the more fun you're going to have on the bike. And they had a film crew out there that took hours of video, used a drone. Uh, they rode alongside you in some instances and got really close-ups. And a good thing about their, their film crew is they took the video in of each individual person and sent us a link so that you didn't have to look through every single one of the eight riders to find yourself on there. It was a very easy thing to find. I'm going to show you some of that video. And they just did a great job. They're also very professional. I know from doing videos and, and making DVDs that uh, it can be a little taxing or, or stressful uh, because the people that you're videoing don't know exactly what uh, you want them to do. But they were very patient, did a great job. And as I said, uh, I learned a lot. In fact, uh, I learned more in those four hours about uh, high-speed riding than I've learned in all the training, including the motor officer high-speed training that we've taken. So I'm going to show you plenty of video. Uh, I'll give you a good idea of, of the, the type of introductions they do and what they tell us while we're there. And I want you to know that there was nothing that was taboo. You could ask these guys anything you want. All of them were willing to be interviewed. And it was not like they wanted a bunch of ass kissers. No, they wanted a bunch of people there that were motorcycle enthusiasts who had a lot of people watching their YouTube videos, assuming those people, of course, are going to be motorcycle enthusiasts as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit that thumbs up. I'll be coming out with more content. Usually I do two videos a week.